With Xbox Game Pass and Xbox Cloud Gaming, you can play AAA console games on your phone from anywhere you want without actually owning an Xbox console. And the best way to play them is through a physical controller like this. But most of the time, either you're commuting to work, taking a short break, or you're in the bathroom, you're not going to have access to one of these. Xbox knows this too, so that's why there's a whole section of games that are customized and optimized for touchscreen gameplay. There's actually a ton of games in this catalog, so I took the time to play a bunch of these so I can share my favorite ones with you guys. My main criteria for picking these games were number one, easy controls for accessible gameplay. Number two, they have to be games where precision isn't too important, which sadly rules out most first person games. Number three, the HUD can't be too small for a phone. It's really a pain to look at some of these UI elements made for TVs. Then number four, they're not available on Google Play or the iOS app store and they can't feel too much like a mobile game since you want that console experience while you're paying for the service. And finally, number five, they have to be good, interesting games and not something you'll stop playing after like 30 minutes. Now, I haven't beaten all of these games that I'm about to list, but I've been having a really good time playing these ones with touch controls. So with all those things in mind, these are the best play with touch games right now in mid 2023 on Xbox Game Pass. Starting with the first pick, it's gotta be Persona 5 or really any Persona game, including Persona 3 and Persona 4, which is my personal favorite. Persona is an RPG series that's a fantastic mix of interactive storytelling telling an RPG gameplay. In each of these games, you're a brand new student at a high school going through all the struggles of being the new kid, studying for exams, and spending time in growing relationships with friends and loved ones. But you're also thrust into an alternate universe that explores the inner psyches of various characters. You defeat their inner demons with turn-based gameplay, level up and upgrade your persona's abilities to basically save the town or the world or something like that. There's some really great character development here, one of the best soundtracks ever, and the vibes are just very cozy which makes it very easy to get yourself invested into these games. And since everything is turn-based and dialogue is choice-driven, the controls are very easy and it really does not matter you're using a touchscreen. There's also many opportunities to save your progress, so it's really good for short bursts of gameplay while you're commuting or waiting for your next appointment. But do keep in mind that finishing the main story could take from 50 to 80 hours or so. The next game is Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. Hellblade is a single-player dark fantasy taking place during the Viking Ages. You play as Senua, who's trying to save the soul of her lost lover taken by Hela, the Norse goddess of death herself. Without a proper HUD, this game is very context driven and it challenges you to figure out puzzles and the next steps yourself, which makes it more fun. It's a fairly slow paced game with frequent autosaves and when there are battles, there's no great need for precision because of enemy lock-ons, so the custom touch controls are more than usable to start and finish this game. Extremely amazing looking visuals in the palms of your hands, it's a perfect way to show off a console game being played on your phone, and to get yourself prepared for the upcoming Hellblade sequel that looks even more amazing. It's a relatively short linear narrative game, so it takes just about 7 hours to finish the game, which is a good amount to not overwhelm yourself. I will mention that it is a pretty dark game though, with some psychological horror elements to it, so it doesn't give the best vibes. Overall though, it really is a masterpiece that you can play on a small screen with touch controls. Next up, Yakuza Like a Dragon. It takes place three years after the events of Yakuza 6, and this is sort of a reboot slash refresh to the Yakuza series from a classic beat-em-up fighter to an action turn-based JRPG. Because of this, Like a Dragon is basically made for touch controls, and you'll have a pretty easy time starting and finishing this game. Yakuza games always have some really good writing and comfortable game mechanics, and Like a Dragon is no exception. You play as a Yakuza member, fighting other gang members, and dealing with internal politics, which can get pretty serious. But there's so many funny elements from hilarious supporting character dialogue and side quests that give range to the gameplay and it keeps it really entertaining throughout. The world feels alive and there are so many activities and fun things to do on the side in this game. It's really a fun time, it feels very arcadey thanks to the excellent soundtrack and sound effects. The dialogues and cutscenes can sometimes go on forever though, so sometimes it can be tough to play for just short periods of time. The good news is that it takes just under 25 hours to complete the game. So if you're new to the series, getting into it now with Like a Dragon, even with only touch controls, is very doable here. Then we've got Minecraft Dungeons. Even if you're not a huge fan of Minecraft like me, Dungeons is a really fun game. Unlike the original sandbox game, Minecraft Dungeons is a Diablo-like dungeon crawler. More than any other game in this list, Dungeons is super customized for touch controls. For cutscenes, UI, and main menu navigation, you can just use a touchscreen itself instead of using the virtual D-pad or stick. It's also very, very responsive, and it's one of the smoothest games I've ever seen running on Xbox Cloud Gaming. Each stage is pretty short too, and the gameplay is comfortably fast paced so it's perfect for short to medium commutes. I wouldn't say Minecraft Dungeons is quite as well crafted as the other games on this list, but the main story is only going to take you about 5 hours to finish so it's definitely worth a try, especially if you just have your phone on you without a controller. Last but not least is Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch Remastered. 
The original was released all the way back in 2011, but it was just remastered last year. If you're not too familiar with the Nino Kuni franchise, imagine if Studio Ghibli made video games. Some of the same people were involved, so you can actually say that. So from the animation to the voice acting to the score, it's a beautiful looking and sounding game that lets you be a child again by entering this magical world. The animated cutscenes are beautiful and almost movie quality. It really feels like you're playing a Studio Ghibli game, so it's just good vibes all around. You play as a child named Oliver who is thrown from a small town into a magical adventure in an alternate world. Even though everything is 2D like animation, the map, the environment, and the characters feel detailed and alive. It's also another action RPG on this list, but has many of the same beats as one of the classic Final Fantasy games. When you encounter a new enemy, you're thrust into a turn-based battle, so still very playable with touch controls. The open world map is a giant top-down like third-person view, just like the older Final Fantasy games. Then once you enter a location, it's a close-up third-person POV. You level up, meet new companions, learn new abilities, and explore a big open world. This one's a pretty long game, taking about 40 to 60 hours to complete the main story, but with how accessible it is with touch controls, you should definitely consider it. So those are my favorite Play With Touch games right now in mid-2023 on Game Pass. I'm sure there's much more to come following the recent Xbox Games Showcase with the reveals for Starfield and Hellblade 2. Much more cloud gaming and other gaming content coming to the channel, so make sure to subscribe. If you think I missed any gems or if you have other recommendations, definitely let us know down in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next video.